Welcome to the final Umaneko stream. This episode is brought to you by Mr. Ryukishi07. Let's get this shit started, yo. Why the fuck would you do this? <laughs> very nice job, B. That's thank a very you, thank, you. thank you for the very poignant uh, opening bit, B. Much appreciated. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the final Lumineco stream. Thank you very much, <laughs> Wee, for doing that voice. Mm -hmm. hey, welcome, welcome back to another stream of Crazy Taxi. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, have a baby we're actually at the end. We are actually like genuinely oh, at the oh. end. It's a little bit insane considering uh, fucking how long we've been doing this for. But, um, yeah, we're gonna try playing this pretty seriously. Uh, depending on how much time we have left over when the stream is finished, uh, we might have, like, an ending bit where people talk about their thoughts on the series as a whole. Ideally, when we want to save that for the, like, bonus extra stream where we talk about, like, all the answers and stuff. But that's largely dependent on how long this takes. This might end up going kind of short, so you might just get to hear our thoughts anyway, right off the bat. Woo! So, uh, yeah. Everything's live. I'm certain everybody is in the Discord and Audible. Invisible, yes. and all that fun business. Yeah. All right, let's get this bitch started. Yes, I've got my seven up. Let's do this biz. Mm -hmm. Also, we've already read all this part, so we're just gonna go ahead and skip right to the choice. <laughs> oh God, Almighty! All right, here we are. All right, so I want to actually put some thought into. Uh, so, are mm -hmm. we actually choosing for this? So, well, I get. So, unfortunately, uh, for the sake of the quote-unquote uh, production and all that fun business, and we want to start off the uh, the bonus stream with the uh, additional content, that is the alternate ending. We will still probably pick the correct one. Okay, but I I still want to put my thought. I would yeah. like to think that this is magic because they are still in this uh imagination world that they are currently in and that's kind of the the twist yeah but that is my thought the place where you can't see it and no one else can see it but them so magic you are super, it's really quiet, quiet, man. super low or yeah yeah you're, you're incredibly quiet, quiet. Mm. Okay. anyway those are my thoughts Okay, my thoughts is that magic and tricks are supposed to be one accepting the reality and going towards the future, and the other one is, hey, I want to know what's actually happened in the past and might fuck up my life about it. That's a pretty harsh way of going about it, but damn. That's pretty much what it is. I think it's magic. Uh, I have to go. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Shall I talk again? Because you were. Hi. You know, for, okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, better. we can hear you now. So, did you hear what I said? No. 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 no, 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 no. Okay, I'll, I'll do it again. I disagree with what he said that um, since they're living in this void right now and no one else can see them but them, it has to be magic. Hmm. I go, I'll go with magic because live for the future, keep on dreaming. Hmm. So the overall majority is magic? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well. Hell yeah. This is my answer. I walked over to the door that represented the answer I had chosen. Then, I put the golden key into the keyhole, and turned to face everyone. Be assure me, Eagle never looks back. That's right. Sorry. I gripped the key tightly and twisted. Then, the key and the door flashed brilliantly, and slowly faded away. Beyond the door was a strangely colored place. If I step into this, I'll reach the future I chose. Before taking that single step, I spoke without turning back. The Ushirami of Eagle never turns back. 
so it won't turn around. But I'll say this. Thank you. Everyone. But this isn't goodbye. I'll always be with you all. Yeah. You won't turn back. We will always be standing behind you. That's not what I mean. Despite it all, I still believe. I'm positive that everyone will come back. Angie. That is good. Angie. I look forward to the day when we all meet again. Angie, my adorable granddaughter. We may be away for some time. Here, don't forget this. It's your prize from the quiz party. Ooh. A, a gold butterfly flew over my shoulder, landed on my palm, and turned into a Beatrice doll. This was lying next to me when I woke up on the sofa, wasn't it? This was my prize. Take it back to the future with you. And treasure it. Thanks, everyone. I took a step forward. Forward into the future. I won't say goodbye. So, see you later. We'll always be together. The wind brushed against my cheek. I slowly opened my shut eyes. I must have had my eyes closed for a very long time. Even the sparkles below me seemed blindingly bright. It was a strange world with a sea of stars beneath me. The wind was cold. However, it told me that I had returned to reality. I was standing with one foot outstretched over that starry sea. How long have I been here? Time has probably been stopped for me ever since Burn lured me forward. When I was about to take that step off the edge. <sighs> I slowly pulled my foot back in. Then I leaned against the fence and sat down. The sky was far away, but so was the ground. This whole time I've been in this sad place, so far from both of these worlds. I can't go to the sky. In that case, I have to return to my world. And the elevator is probably the way to go. I've done enough skydiving. Yeah, there really is no chance. No chance of me jumping down from here and surviving by some miracle. Some Witch of Miracles has already guaranteed with certainty that such a miracle won't occur after all. Then, I finally noticed them. It was the guards President Okanogi had assigned to me. They were approaching the fence with forced smiles and sweat dripping down their faces, trying not to startle me. That's right. 
I gave these guys a slip before jumping off, didn't I? Did you think I was going to jump? Well, uh, that's, um, uh... Sorry. If I jumped, I guess you'd really catch it from Okunoki-san. Uh, Angie-san, it's dangerous there. For now, please come back inside. Let me stay here a bit longer. It's okay. Fucking whoops. Oh, no. I won't get any sudden ideas. Do any of you have a cell phone? Uh, yes. I want to talk to Okanogi-san about something. Would you mind calling him? The guards looked at each other, then rushed to take out their cell phones. They were worried that I might get annoyed and jump off, leaving them to take the blame. The president has picked up. Here. Thanks. Hello. Okunogi-san. Yeah. Sorry for calling all of a sudden. No. It's excellent news. A bit of an early Christmas present. I'm giving all of the Ashuramiya group to you. That's right. In exchange, I have a few things I want. As she gazed down at the sea of stars spread out on the ground below her, Angie spoke. She spoke of how she would live from now on. Ashramia Angie's strange and mysterious adventure ends here. But my life will continue. After all, there's already something for me to do. I am Angie Beatrice, witch of Mariage Saucier. Ushiramiya Angie just fell from here and died. I am the witch Angie. I'll live as a witch. And so, your game ends. As Angie opened the door and vanished from sight, the residents of the Golden Land disappeared as well. Afterwards, only Battler could still be seen. He had now done everything he could for Angie. And close the door. Wasn't there some rule to be followed when closing the store? Yes, that's right. The rule said that you needed two people to close it. Hey, I'm Ava. I told you to stop talking to me like I'm an old lady. The two of them stood to the left and right of the door that Angie had vanished through. Angie. Find happiness in your future. After all, we'll always be with you. And the two of them held their hands out in front of them. As they did, a door popped into existence and closed. And the door itself faded away. And now, we have completed our role. Yeah. This marks the end of the pieces of the, of the pieces' purpose. You've worked hard, both of you. And with this, I shall clean up your game board and put it away. Slowly, the world melted. 
At a glance, it looked as though the city of books was starting to fall apart. But that wasn't it. Battler and Ava's world was being cut off from the city of books. The world broke apart bit by bit, and the ceiling would probably fall in soon. This is goodbye. That lagoon. <laughs> yeah. See you later. And someday, I'll leave Angie in your hands. On Ava. At least in the end, try calling me Ava Onesan, would you? See you later, Erica. Somewhere. Someday. Both Angie and I were witches of truth. So what was the difference between us? Yeah. What could it be? I was a witch who endured and withstood the truth. But I turned my back on that truth. However, even after she learned the truth, she continued to believe in her own truth. If she was the witch of she was a true witch of truth, then what kind of witch was I? That's right. You aren't a witch. After all, you're the detective. I've forgotten. We'll meet again someday. Wherever there's a crime, the detective's sure to be there. Right? Yes. When another crime occurs in the Ashramia family, I promise to appear. So long, great detective. So long, my rival. I look forward to the day when the two of us can cross blades again. Those were the final words the two had ever spoken to each other. A terrible roar and a cloud of dust blew by, covering everything. And then, everything vanished. Nothing remained. Battler and Ava were both gone. The City of Books was wrapped in silence. It's all over. Yes! Great Lady Aurora! Take care of my pet cat. Now, I shall go too. There are some things that must be cleaned up in this world as well. When Achijo made her announcement, everyone fell silent thinking they had misheard her. Before too long though, the crowd exploded with a shower of questions about what she meant by this. Random feet, random crowd goers. <laughs> That's too cool! You can't do that after dragging us along this far. Oh Jesus Christ! Madam Hachijo, we have to come. We have to come from far and wide to see it. Yes. Hold on a second. I have to fucking turn off his audio logs. I did not know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that he. Wait, what the fuck? What? It's all off. Mandatory <laughs> audio. Oh, mandatory. Oh, just... off the voice. You have to oh, hear no, this character's God. voice. He's a part of the audio track. That's you crazy. went to hear Professor Utsi. How can you do this now? <laughs> I will say it again. I've changed my mind. Ushirmia Eva's diary will not be made public. A fraud! So a fraud! Was it really a Shirley Ava's diary? Are you sure it wasn't a fabrication you created? You think you can get away with something like this? Show us the book! Rabble, rabble, rabble! And children. <laughs> children of men can be so hideous. Neither you nor I have the right to read what lies in there. However, now that I think of it, this has been quite an entertaining show. Children of men who disturb the sleep of the dead and spread rumors for their own entertainment can be quite amusing at times like this. Let, let us go, Byrne. 
I've had my share of entertainment for the night. All I'm thinking is how much money did some of these people spend to travel? A black cat jumped on the Hachi Joe's shoulder and she disappeared off to the side of the stage, the book of the single truth in her arms. Only the angry yells of the massive crowd remained. Rabble, 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 rabble! <laughs> I spent $10,000 to get here! And so, the people began to lose interest in Ashramia Ava's diary, doubting whether it could have ever truly existed. That the weekly magazines were in an uproar over the scam Hachijo Toya had pulled. Some began to openly wonder if the Rokenjima mystery itself was an indiscreet discretion of the de desecration of the dead. I don't think a, think a little thing like this will allow a Rokenjima to rest in peace. However, it did create an atmosphere of people that were slightly more hesitant to openly show interest in the Rokenjima mystery. An unopened cat box is eternal. Rokenjima will probably never find peace. However, even so, compared to how it was before, life will surely be easier. Because as the years passed, past, the dust will slowly pile up on where it lies in the depths of oblivion. At the bottom of the deep sea, known as the depths of oblivion, the cat box of the witches will probably get slowly buried as the years pass. Featherin threw a single golden rose into that sea, an offering to let the cat box rest in peace. The tale of that golden rose. Let us mark the end of this long story. In the darkness, there was a massive roar and an earthquake. When it passed, dawn began to rise over the endless night. Where am I? We're in the wreckage of an old submarine base. Don't you remember? That's where it all started. <laughs> the place where we first met two generations ago. <laughs> Sounds pretty romantic if you put it that way. Balor and Beto could be seen in the ruins of Rokenjima's underground submarine base. The cave's mouth opened to the sea, and the gentle sound of the waves drifted along with the cries of the seagulls. Some of the typhoon, which had closed off the island for two days, had finally gotten bored and gone away. Beto went down to the shore and lifted up a large sheet. Beneath it was a motorboat. Of course, it wasn't from the time of the war. It was modern. Pile this up on the boat. Careful, it's heavy. Well, this is a gold ingot. I thought they all got burned, buried. I thought something like this might happen. So I snuck this one out beforehand. The single heavy golden ingot was dropped into the boat. I'm not sure how much this is worth by itself, but it must be quite a lot. Have you ever driven a motorboat before? <laughs> You're joking, right? It's easy. <laughs> I'll teach you. She wasn't used to this, but after several mistakes, Beato finally got the engine started. If you go on that way and hop from island to island, you'll see Nijima before too long. Then you can just land on a sandy beach. Aren't you coming? I cannot. I am the master of the Golden Land. I cannot leave this place. What's to be gained from staying? What's to be gained from going? Let's live. I cannot. I have already committed countless sins in countless worlds. 
The number of lives I have taken, the number of sins I have committed, is far too great. But you haven't committed any sins in our world. No, that is not true. Hmm. Go. Go while I'm still in a good mood. Otherwise, I may seal the island in a storm again. Battler suddenly spun around. When Beata turned around to see what was going on, her body was suddenly lifted into the air. Then, I'll take you back as a souvenir from the Golden Land. L let go! Th this isn't safe! Come on, don't freak out. Listen carefully, Beatrice. Wh what? I'm going to kidnap you. Uh. As Battler quietly gazed at her with serious eyes, Beato was a loss for words. If you've sinned, then I've sinned as well for making you do it. So, let's carry your cross together. Battler. As long as I live, I'll carry your cross. Let's leave the Golden Land, you and me, together. Biano is now too shocked to say anything at all. Then tears poured from her eyes and she covered her face. Battler gently sat her down on the boat. He undid the mooring ropes. Now there was no longer anything tying this boat to the island. Let's go. Controlling the boat as Biano had taught him, Battler slowly guided it out. When they passed out of the dimly lit cavern, they were immediately struck by the bright rays of the sun, and surrounded by a crowd of white seagulls. As the seagulls flew this way and that, the feathers they dropped in the water seemed to celebrate the boat's departure. The brilliant sunlight told them they were now free of the silence curse. The sky, now freed from the seal of the typhoon, seemed too bright to be real. Feeling hot, Battler took off his jacket swept away by the wind and danced through the sky. However, instead of panicking, Rattler just smiled as he watched it go. Beato also watched it go. No, she watched the island go. Rokenjima, and the golden land she'd spent a thousand years in. Will I be able to live? You will. You won't have a magical butler, but there's all sorts of useful stuff out there. There's no end to the things you couldn't find on Rokinjima. I'll show you what the world's like. Will I be able to live? Beata repeated the same words again. Bella knew what she meant. However, no, ma no matter what answer he gave, he wouldn't be able to resolve her problem now. However... There was a way to resolve it. Time and the heart. Little by little, bit by bit, like a chain being cut by falling drops of water. You have to sever the curse of the island gradually over a long period of time. It might take a long, long time. However, someday, she will be free. That's what I believe. I am a sinful witch, who toyed with hundreds of deaths on that island. Your world is too brilliant for me. No. You will live. I answered immediately and forcefully. If you think you need to atone for hundreds of sins, then keep on living and living. Live as hard as you can, with everything you've got. That's the only way you can atone. Is that truly the only way to atone for my sins? That's right. And you'll definitely be able to do it someday. Trust me. Butler. Come on. Don't look at me with those teary eyes. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, 
forgive me. Then, at the very least, would you close your eyes? Why, why should I? Hey, your face is pretty close. Foolish man. You ought to be cursed for taking the witch away from the Golden Land. That's why you must close your eyes. It's embarrassing for me, too. As soon as Bradler shut his eyes, soft lips covered his, and they slowly drew back. He tried to open his eyes, but just got slapped. Don't look! I told you not to look at my face! C come on! What's there to lose? You have no delicacy. Don't open them. Not yet. Why? Because I want to kiss you again. The next kiss was on his earlobe. Hey, quit it. This is getting really embarrassing. He knew he'd get hit again if he opened his eyes, so he resisted with his eyes still shut. But there's sl sighing and tickling his ear, Vita spoke in her usual cheerful, bullying voice. Sorry, Badler. I'm a terrible, atrocious witch. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're an evil, cruel witch. And so, I cannot atone for my sins. After all, I'm a sort of witch who can cackle over hundreds of deaths. You're really something, you know that? But you wouldn't you wouldn't be you otherwise. Hex suddenly opened his eyes. When he did, the witch was nowhere to be seen. The golden witch had vanished, like a dream or an illusion. And so the single ingot that they had carried with them. Battler jumped straight into the ocean, and so he made it in time. He made it in time to see the witch again. The witch looked up at Battler, a faint smile on her face. He couldn't hear any words, and yet he heard clearly. Didn't I tell you, Battler? I'm an atrocious witch, so I cannot atone for my sins. I cannot live. Battler desperately spoke back, however, his words only floated out of his mouth as bubbles. As she sank into the inky, bl inky blackness, Battler chased her with all of his strength. And then... His hand reached hers. Battler, you fool. You made it off the island alive. You would throw that away. I won't let go of you. It pleases me to hear you say that. However, I am a creature of illusions, and you're human. You have different worlds to go back to. I will return. Oh, dear. Fuck. All around them was getting darker and darker. The pressure increased and their hands and ears began to throb. And then at last, their fingers separated. At once, Battler rose to the world of light. The witch sank toward the world of darkness. Seeing Battler's body rising towards the shiny surface, the witch relaxed. So long, Battler. And thank you. When she saw Battler's body come a speck and disappear towards the world of light, the witch slowly closed her eyes. Then, she felt something, but that was impossible. After all, Balor had disappeared into the distance, but it was Balor. Balor had come after the witch. You think I'll let you get away? You're my golden witch. Balor, you fool. You fool. If falling is a superstitious world you desire, I'll fall with you. If that is a world of nothingness. But until the very last moment... You will be mine. The two hugged each other tightly. Fate didn't try to tear them apart again. And so the two became one, and sank into the abyss together. Then in the pitch black world where nothing could be seen, something sparkled. A warm, golden sparkle. It was a golden rose. Floated down into a world covered with immaculate white sand. Half buried in that sand was a small box. It was Beatrice's cat box. 
which rested in peace here at the ocean floor. The golden rose slowly came the rest on top of it. This is the bottom of the sea, far beneath the waves. A small and fragile tail of a faintly golden glowing rose, resting in the deepest depths of the darkest shadow. I'm terribly sorry. That was like, that is so much slower in the original version. Jesus fucking Christ. You guys can unmute now. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Good. That's a cute scene. Fuck. <laughs> mm. You did good. You did, did good. good. I did as did, I did as good as I could. And Kanye, you did your best too. That's great. Thank you. You did great, Khan. Mm -hmm. A black luxury car was parked at the rear entrance of the skyscraper. Men wearing suits were packed into a heavy looking at were packing a heavy looking attache case into its trunk. Huh. Uh, let me handle all the rest. We'll take care of all the complicated details. I'm counting on you. And Ava trusted you more than anyone. So I'm sure she's glad this is all in your hands now. Out of the building came Angie and President Okanogi. Angie's expression was peaceful. It's hard to imagine that this was the same person who had always looked so dark in Okanogi's eyes. And in the later years, the company president was very ill. I imagine that she said some fairly harsh things to you. But I don't believe she truly meant them. I know. Even I said things I shouldn't have on my bad days. Hmm. You've changed. You think so? I thought you'd never forgive the president as long as you lived. You are the one who taught me Okanoki-san. I did? Did I say something? Without love, the truth cannot be seen. I really say something that pretentious. <laughs> it's been a long journey. It really has been a long journey. All just to understand what you told me that day. Of course Okanogi understood. He understood that, in her heart, this had been a long and profound journey. Contact me when you decide on a new home and account. I won't let- I won't let you win for anything. Any problems with the Sumodera family? Ah, leave that to me. We have the power of your- we have your power of attorney as our rallying point. Thanks to that, the Ashira Mia group is a united front. Because of what you did, Angie Chen, the business built by the former president has been protected. I truly believe she'd be joyful at your decision. I'm just pushing all the hard stuff on you. When the great President Ashuramiya, Ava, passed away, the Ashuramiya group was shaken. There was no clear successor, so the group had been, there had been danger of splitting. How to that everybody had been waiting to hear what Angie would say, since she had inherited a large portion of the group's stock. However, Angie had shown no interest in any of this had gone around take, talking about things like selling all their assets and donating everything to some charity. Which had shaken this group even further. There had even been a chance that an outsider such as the Sumadera family would interfere and destroy the Ashuramiya group. As disturbing as it may seem, some had wished for the source of all this trouble 
Angie to disappear. However, Angie had undergone a change of heart, trying to do what was best for the Assure Me group that Ava had built up, and the worst case scenario had been avoided. Okanogi had been named as Angie's legal guardian. By simply giving her trust, Angie now had in, hi Angie now had in him the most reliable ally possible. Okanogi himself had certain plans he could carry out based on the knowledge that Angie trusted him. Okanogi, who had carried a great responsibility in the Ashuramiya group thanks to his position as Ava's closest confidant, was the most natural choice to be Ava's successor for the top spot. And thanks in part to his ability, everything had now been wrapped up smoothly. This way, the Ashuramiya group was secure. The Ashuramiya group had been the only thing still tied to the Ashuramiya name other than Angie herself. Though she might have ha might have ha might have thoughts of it as her final link to her family. You know, you're free to come back anytime you want. We have a chair set aside just for you. Thanks. Just knowing I have a place to go back to means I can set off on my journey in peace. What are you gonna do? What are you going to do from now on? I'm going to become an author. An author? To write novels? It doesn't matter what. It could be novels or picture books. If I have any skill at drawing, maybe I'll do a manga. What I do doesn't matter. As long as I can share my heart with someone. Sounds like you've set a noble task for yourself. I'll be praying for your success. Thanks. If I manage to publish a book, I'll send you a copy. Hmm. I'll look forward to it. The car's trunk was closed with a clunk. Apparently, all of her luggage had been loaded. Ah, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna introduce you to the driver. He's a protege of mine. He's trustworthy, and you can rely on him for anything. Oh, and he worked as a guard for the old president many years ago, so I, I thought you might recognize him. As long as it isn't a moxa. Jelly sneeze. Uh, uh just, pick up. Just, just say no, Achu. No, just say Achu. Uh, yeah, Achu. <laughs> the man walking out of the driver's seat sneezed. That hurts, lady. Uh, Marcus, uh, what the hell have you done to her? Well, he was always the most flippant of Aunt Ava's guards. I was hoping for pretty much anyone else. But he was also the one closest to you, wasn't he? Well, at least listening to him talk can be pretty entertaining. The boss is me to be his contact with you. If you ever got in any sort of trouble, just let me know. And what if I ask you to go buy me toilet paper? Could apply. Then I'll go pick up some tampons too while I'm out. See? The guy's a creep. Okanogi oh, guffawed. <laughs> and this back to Angie. I got into the back seat. Uh, stay well, Angie Chan. I guess this is the last time anyone will call me by that name. Let me know when you've decided on a new one. Okanogi oh, patted the roof of the car. At that signal, Amakusa honked the horn and removed the handbrake.
So, unless you, until you've decided on a new name, I guess I'll be calling you Lady. That's fine for now. Okay. Where are we going? North? South? Any recommendations? Why don't we try leaving the main island? I'd suggest, uh, I'd suggest Hokkaido. Huge meadows, giant clouds, a novelist writing stories in a log cabin. Sounds awesome! Great. Let's head south. I was planning to do the opposite of whatever you said anyway. Oh, wrong, wrong key. Yeah, that's pretty harsh. I'd like to go someplace hot. A town with a view of the sea. Angie closed her eyes. Things have been pretty crazy lately, and she was tired. Understood. By the time you open your eyes, we'll be in unfamiliar land. But it'll be a, a warm town with the view of the sea. Can't wait to see what you choose. The car got onto the freeway. It was surrounded by the great river of cars heading east and west. By now, no one could tell which of these points was the car she rode in. Starting today, Shimia Angie would change her name and live in a new climate. Changing her name doesn't mean that she had given up on being Angie. This was Angie's. No. Angie Beatrice's mission. I am Angie Beatrice. The golden and endless witch of resurrection. A witch of Mariage Saucier. The final witch who is still alive in the future called 1998. Had to do that. Wait I'm to fucking... win the mode. We still have it. We still have the fucking tea parties. Relax. Also, I know, I know. I don't know if you can hear it behind me now, but people are setting off fireworks in my neighborhood, and they're being jerks about it. I did not hear Nobody the explosions. Hear the fireworks. I hear my. Should. I hear my own explosions. All right. What we so all should, should do is to cut out all the background. Jeez. I mean, con cool girls don't allow fireworks to get. Uh, you know, input it over the mic, and you've been doing a good job with that. Okay. And let um, the emotions feel in you. Yeah, just, just, do uh, yeah. All right, everybody except necessary, shut up. Yeah, let's just keep this I picture rolling. I live in a residential, it's illegal. Tea party! This one you're good for, though. This one's funny. Oof. I eat. B, why'd you mute? You're up. <laughs> Listen, I'm just taking time for myself. Fair enough. <sighs> The majestic witch of theater going, drama and spectating, set down her pen, looked at the ceiling and sighed deeply. <sighs> the desk was covered with a scattered mountain of paper covered with writing. It was repacked onto the pages in a thin, high, high information density language that only the great ones could read. Each letter of this language carried the same amount of information as several books in the human world. These letters filled every inch of this huge pile of paper. Surely she had written out every last little detail of some world. Yes, I have written it all. Though, to be, an a to be accurate, I have tr not truly written it all. She stood up, sat down in her favorite rocking chair, and rocked peacefully for a while. How far must one write before they can say they've written it all? 
That is what has bothered me in all my years of writing. The adventures of humans can be very interesting as a tale. However, even I still don't know when that adventure stops being an adventure. <sighs> My old friend, who is gone now, once said that a human's life is an adventure from beginning to end, so there's never a correct time to set down one's pen. I do not agree. I think one must put away the pen at some point. I believe that one should write a tale to an appropriate point, then leave the aftertaste and opinions to the minds of the spectators. In short, the tale must be put inside a cat box at the appropriate time. And the cat box has been the subject of this long tale, so it's not better so it is not better to refrain from writing its demise. To instead put it in a cat box and leave it there? Featherin spoke to no one inside the empty study. Of course, no one, no one commented on her words. However, Featherin seemed to hear something. She nodded and grinned contentedly. Yes, I know. I will write a bit further and then lay down my pen. Then it'll be time for us to say our goodbyes. Featherin held up a finger and spun it around. This thing let you on to darken the room. The lights in the study dimmed. And would you mind letting me rest for a while? And during that time, my cat, or rather my Miko, will entertain you. Uh, can't you be a little less clumsy with that needle? Shut up. If you don't want it sewn by hand, I'll use a sewing machine. No, no machines. I want you to do it by hand. So please, just be a little more gentle. Ow, ow. It'll get better if you spit on it. Yeah. Don't just start licking me all of a sudden. Hmm. I think this needle should be thick enough. This'll hurt like hell, so you'd better close your eyes. Five, four, three, two. Don't say that right before you start. Yeah! <laughs> but despite all this, the two of them truly were close. Lambda Delta had been brutally dismembered in the final fight, she had survived. But unfortunately, she was still dismembered. So Burncastle was sewing her arms and head back on with a needle and thread. The left arm, which was still wanting to be waiting to be reattached, walked around on the bed impishly with its index and middle finger. All the arms were left to do was look at this to be finished soon. Then Erica returned, slap slamming the desk over the door open. I'm home, my master! I brought some sesame salt! Why sesame salt? You aren't planning to put it in tea, are you? It's Erica's toy. Erica, did you bring your chopsticks? Yes, my master! Great detectives have their magnifying glasses. I, Ferdo Erica, have my chopsticks! Are you ready? Pour out that sesame salt and use those chopsticks to separate the sesame seeds from the salt. Yes, my master! Please watch my fantastic chopstick wielding skills! <sighs> yeah, good luck. When you're done, make sure you put everything back in the bag. Are you still bullying her like that? How rude. I'm playing with her. Ah, uh, yes. Erica. The mailman just came by with a letter addressed to you. A letter? I sense a crime calling to me! Don't tell me, I'll guess who sent it! The postmark is from heaven. It's probably from Delanor or someone. I'm surprised you're still in touch. 
just by the presence of this postmark. See how far Bern Castell's reasoning has taken her. Hey! You can't do that, my master. Van Dyne's knife is written to have multiple detectives. Then you'd better get out. So long, great detective Erika. My master, how could you? I'm Erika, witch of truth! I still can't tell if you two like each other or hate each other. Of course we hate each other. You're the only one I love. How could you, my master? Lady Lambda Delta! It looks like there's not enough room for the two of us! Are you serious? Are you challenging the great Lambda Delta? Erica grinned and grabbed Lambda Delta's left arm, which had been walking around the bed. I have here Lady Lambda Delta's arm. And here is a slice open end of her arm. Erica grinned and wriggled her fingers menacingly. Wait, you aren't thinking. Let's see if my rival can handle this. <laughs> Stop the tickles. <laughs> she tickled the inside of Landed Delta's left arm. Apparently she was extremely ticklish there. Incidentally, the open end of Lambda Delta's arm had cute, fluffy white cotton candy poking out. Apparently her body was made out of sweet candy, with a bit of spice thrown in. Put your mind at ease, as there's nothing remotely terrifying about this scene. Ah! Uh, Erica ran around, screaming, I've defeated Lady the Delta all by myself, just like my master! Lady the Delta growled and hissed at her. Brenda Castle kept on sewing and a, an exasperated look on her face. It was a very peaceful scene. So, what does the letter say? Anything about what Dylan or the others have been up to? Gertrude sounds better to, to a full inquisitor or something. Well, good for her. Yay! Oh, in addition to her, to her cat, she's got a one. She's got a mew woof, mew woof too. She's got a wan yan. Wan yan. Wan yan. Wan yan. What's a meow woof? What? You don't know? You're so out of touch. Even all the rage lately. Even I got a fe female Meow Wolf a, a few days back. You can make awesome Competo with them too. Competo. <laughs> I'm totally lost, but I'll make sure I stay far away from your homemade food in the future. Cornelia san is... Oh... During an Inquisitor's exam, she found that she's really good at fighting, so she started combat training. Pretty to imagine her doing that, right? Well, there's all kinds of combat training. What's she doing? Looks like kickboxing in Chinese Kenpo. Could that be Ava's influence? I'll bet she's fight pretty good standing on one leg. Good point. After all, she's been trained pretty well by a certain someone already. It also mentions Will-san. Ah, there's a surprise. Looks like Will-san hit, hit it big on the foreign exchange market and he's now living a life of leisure on the income from his real estate investments. Sounds like he started playing badminton lately, too. I'll bet he has a hellish coach. His blood's probably swollen by now. So, what about Delanor? As usual, she's stamping things, stamping things, sealing things, approving things, and sometimes even signing things. She humbly asks to stir up a crime in her district, so since she would get assigned to it personally. Well, why don't we? Crime sounds fun. And they say crimes occur whenever, wherever the detective goes. One of these days, if I feel like it, I might drop in to bully her. Oh, and there's also something you hear about the chest of sister course. Wait. 
I don't want to hear it all at once. You've got to pause a bit for dramatic effect. Okay, that'll do it. Tell me. I finally grew my right arm back. Do the left one now, please. Let's have some tea first. Erica, bring in a can of black tea and the pot of dried plums. Yes, my master! With that particular journey over and done with, the Voyager witches rested their wings. Also that they could leave on a new journey in search of the next fragment. A short break between trips, backdrop by the pleasant scent of black tea. Where are you going this time? If you go north, I'm heading south. Then if you go east, I'm heading west. I hope we can find another charming tale like this one. Next time, I hope you aren't playing the villain again, Byrne. You do? Being the bad guy was pretty fun. I wonder, what kind of tale we'll, we'll find next? And what kind of tale we'll meet next in? To a pair of lovers, the Sea of Fragments is tiny. Children of Paradise. The Sea of Fragments is pretty huge. Ghost in the Shell. We'll meet again. And something else cries. Sounds good. Let's do that. Oh no. One, no. two. Oh, oh wait, three, that's an auto scroller. Three. That's an auto scroller. <laughs> no, damn it. <laughs> it's fine. Oh! So long, everyone. <laughs> so long, everyone. See you again, and something else cries. Damn. <laughs> Holy shit, I didn't know there was a fucking auto-scroller! <laughs> you, those auto-scrollers will get you. Jank until the very out. fucking end. We got got! Jesus Christ. And it should be no different. Mm -hmm. Do you want to like give that an honest try about doing it at the exact same time? Yes. <laughs> Alright, go ahead. What was the line? We'll meet again when we'll something else cries. Okay. Alright, one, two, three. We'll meet again when, when something, something else, else cries. cries. Damn, nope, whatever, no, it's actually, fine. Actually, so much, you know, straight up, that almost worked if you didn't, like, hesitate B, straight up. <laughs> yeah, hesitation. You no, did no, pretty like, good. I get it, like, it's hard to talk over somebody. <laughs> okay, so, um, here, I'm gonna cut the feed really quickly for just a smidgen, uh, so we can go ahead and get some stuff set up. If, if, if we serve a death in B... Mm -hmm. And I've gone try to do it at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Wait, so it's probably isn't gonna fucking count the the off screen people. Actually, do they even have lines? Hmm. Uh. Mm. Oh. Uh. Okay. Here. Real talk. Should we just do the line? Should we just do the line before? Should we just like? Should we just go go all in on that? Because like this is gonna be kind of a pain in the ass to do otherwise. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> what line? A, a thing. Uh, you're, you're we'll cool, find fair. out uh, pretty soon. Uh, consult in the Fight Club really quickly. Should we just, should we try and do it like actually? Uh, oh, hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Random mic. What were you asking? I straight up wasn't paying attention. Okay, so here, should we uh, let out, let the auto scroll at the end play normally, or should we? Uh, should I should I try doing like the regular like the actual voiceover stuff, and just fuck around and find out? Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I figured. All right. So someone just give me the line directly before that, and then we can just do it then. Okay. We yeah, we'll just that. we'll just you someone can say, someone just slap that up for me while we get I'll started get with the next bit. Thank you very much. Okay, never mind. We're just gonna have to be. Things are just gonna be a little bit jank, I guess. Well, everything's fucking jank anyway. This is no different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Zaz is here. What's up, dude? Zaz has been mm -hmm. here for a little while now. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, Sorry. then. Sorry. So yeah, just tell me like the line exactly before that thing. So, are we um, sure that the line right before it is not also an auto school? Like, I know for I'll a fact that there is a line that stops like just before then, so we should be good. I will make a million saves leading up. Mm -hmm. I'll make yeah. sure. So we will we'll we'll run through this as it is as it comes normally in the meantime. We're not going to worry about any of the config shit. So for how this goes, um, literally it's just going to be. Myself doing narration, uh, B, Khan, and I guess technically Rindy for for a, for a character that has literally anything else. Okay, that's the last one for the auto scroller. Okay, gotcha. All right, cool. Okay, let's go. Decades later. There's the largest banquet hall in this huge hotel. The many guests that filled the room Kate, chattered and applauded to the, the person receiving an award trophy on top of the stage. The sign in front said the award ceremony for Japan's greatest publishers. And now we'd like to begin the novel category. The winner is... That fantasy adventure novel we all know so well... A story that started a worldwide movement that continues to grow in leaps and bounds. Sakutaro's Greatest Adventure! <laughs> the projector in front of the audience showed a brief summary of the series. It was a lengthy fantasy adventure novel that was already more than eight installments long. The thrilling fantasy story told of the adventures of Sakutaro, a cowardly ve vegetal lion who made friends, learned through his experiences, and grows in his search for the one fragment. The main character's catchphrase, I'll become the king of the beasts, was even one of the candidates for the buzzwords of the year the buzzwords of the year award. In addition to being a thrill to read, the books also contain many messages for children to learn from. Earning its high praise is an adventure novel that parents and kids could enjoy reading together. However, it hadn't received such praise from the beginning. For the first six volumes, it was almost, it went almost entirely unnoticed. But the last year, when foreign translations of the series began, it got its big break and suddenly became a huge topic of conversation. Even before the series, the author had created quite a lot of works, but none of those achieved any public acclaim. However, after this sudden rise in notoriety, her previous works were being revealed, re-evaluated one after another. In that sense, it's probably fair to call her an author who went unrecognized for quite a long time. Miss Kotobuki, congratulations on your award. Your latest Sakataro Ghost of the Witch's Island was truly an excellent read. Publishing company's executives repeatedly showered her with praise. Sakutaro's Great Adventure. The author's name was Kotobuki Yukari. Nearly all of her royalties were sent to a fund to support needy children and she herself had served as the director of several protective institutions. Some envious people try to call this fake charity, but then, but the more the, pe the more that the people learned about her, the more those voices with withered and died away. Kotobuki Yukari. By now that name rang loud and clear across Japan. She sat in a chair, cheerfully chatting with the people who came to greet her. I see she was diagnosed with the initial stages of cancer. After the surgery, her physical strength dropped sharply. Because of this, even in the stand-up awards party, she was given a chair and sat down while greeting people. As people lamented, saying that if she only she had only, she had been twenty, even ten years younger, she would have left her mark in history as one of the greatest authors in the twenty-first century. Taken so long for her to receive the praise that she deserved, she could no longer be called young. Even so, her determination to write had not wavered in the slightest. The story had gone, gone around saying that, even during her stay in the hospital, most of her time had been spent typing away. 
She always said the same thing. That she hadn't finished telling everything she needed to tell. Did she mean that she hadn't fully completed Sakutaro's great adventure? When that question was asked by a journalist, this is how she answered. Uh, Khan, you are Yukari, technically. <clears throat> if, by writing even one more book, I can teach just one more child how to find happiness, then I will spend the rest of my life writing every book, every page that I can. Because I still haven't fully conveyed the precious teachings I was given. Uh, Miss Kotobuki, congratulations on your award. I hear the movie adaptation has been getting splendid reviews as well. If you keep this up, you might even pass up Harry the Potato's record. Thank you very much for your kind words. It's more than I deserve. Oh, I forgot to tell you. My name is... X. X, head of the company X's first editorial department. It is an honor to meet you. I hope we have a chance to work together sometime. Actually, Miss Kotobuki, I uh, apologize for being abrupt, but have you heard of the novelist known as Hachicho Toya? Hachicho Toya, you say? She remembered that name from several decades ago. She didn't expect to even hear it again. Do you know the na don't know that, that name? Have you met Hachicho by any chance? No, I have not. I did go to visit once, but I was an unknown back then. And since I suddenly barged into the publishing company office, it's hardly surprising that I was refused an interview. Oh, I didn't know that. Could it be that you're a fan of Hachicho's work? No. I just wanted to find out what sort of person she was. I see, I see. Well, the truth is, about that novelist, Hachichitoya, would you like to meet with her, you would like to meet with you uh, discreetly? Hmm. To meet with me? Yes. Not as a formal interview, but personally off the record. If you're interested, we would be happy to arrange the meeting. But, of course, this has nothing to do with work. Hachijo Toya wants to meet Kotobuki Yukari. Back to, back to you, Tom. Just like how I realized that Itoi Kukuro was Hachijo Toya. Did she use my name to figure out my identity? The Rokenjima Mis- Oh yeah, that's right, you shit. <laughs> the Rokenjima mystery has been called one of the greatest social phenomena at the turn of the century. That uproar which dragged in enthusiasts from across the world suddenly subsided after an event held by Hachijo Toya, where she was going to unveil the diary of Ushirumiya Eva, which contained the truth. Though she had set up the event herself, then outrageously disappeared without releasing the contents of the diary, drawing harsh criticism for doing so. However, a very, very obvious feeling had been revived in the public sphere. That they had been prying into a terrible accident, with many victims purely out of curiosity. And so, the frenzy surrounding the Rokenjima mystery had faded away quietly. 
Hachijo Toya. No. Itoi Kukuro. She caught the public eye as a forger of Rokenjima mysteries. She claimed to reach the truth and release groundbreaking works of fiction one after another. She became famous as the driving force behind the Rokenjima mystery. After realizing that Ito Yukukuro was Hachijo Toya, I went to greet her publishing company to ask for an interview, but I didn't get one. That time, I despised her. Back in the beginning, I thought she might have used the Rokenjima mystery as a publicity stunt to advance herself. But now I feel a bit grateful to her. If she hadn't refused to show the diary in such an outrageous way, the Rokenjima cat box might still be the plaything of countless goats. She was indeed a forger who had toyed with the cat box, and I still had an uneasy feeling about her. However, at the same time, she was the one who, practically speaking, allowed Rokenjima to rest in peace. And did she really reach the truth? How would she reach something that seemed infinitely close to the truth, even from my perspective? Even now, after all these years, that's something I've wanted to know. What do you think, Miss Kotobuki? Of course, this is not an urgent request. I was told to tell you to take your time in making your decision if you wished. I understand. Does Hachijo Toya live near the city? I was told that a meeting near here would be satisfactory at any time. I see. In that case, can I arrange? Can I ask you to arrange a meeting for us in a quiet coffee shop next Sunday? Yes, as you wish. Thank you, thank you very much. I believe Hachijo will be delighted as well. I have one condition. Yes, whatever you say. I am not going to discuss business, so please refrain from sending anyone from the editing department. But of course, we will do as you say. Madam Hachicho and I will meet alone. Just the two of us. Can I count on you to keep that promise? Well, as to that... We would um, appreciate it if you kept this quiet, but... What is it? Well, the truth is... The works of Hachijotoya were written by two people. To the outside world, those books were written by a single female author. But there is actually a secondary author, a male one. The pair of them asked for a chance to meet you. As soon as I heard that, I felt a premonition. How had Hajijo Toya, a person with no connections to the Ushirmiya family, managed to write about it in such detail? I was already feeling a premonition of a certain kind of miracle. When I left on my journey, I abandoned the name of Ushirmiya Anji and stepped into a new life. By now things have settled down, but when the Sumadera family was still a threat, I wanted to distance myself from that name. Thanks to that, no one was able to get in touch with the new me anymore. However, now that Sakataro's adventure has caught the public eye this year and made the name of Kotobuki Yukari famous, 
Maybe it finally reached his ears. I used to play with a lion stuffed animal called Sakotaro, along with Maria and Echan. If those who knew this connected the name Sakotaro with my name, then it's only natural that they'd figure out who I was. The number of people who would be able to recognize me from that was very, very small. This person was also well-versed in detective novels, and a man. I could only think of one person who matched. After all, I knew just how many detective novels he had piled up in his room from the time when his effects were gone through. It was almost the time we had arranged for our meeting. My heart was racing. Almost like a girl in love for the first time. At the very instant that the arranged time came, I heard the sound of the chime on the door. And they appeared. It was a man sitting in a wheelchair. And a woman pushing him. My eyes immediately fixed on the man in the wheelchair. And right away, I saw the traces that remained on his face. There's no doubt about it. He's my brother. My brother. Ushirumi a battler. When our eyes met, he gave a little bow. I hurried to my feet and bowed back. It was a somewhat exaggerated and silly way for a pair of siblings to greet each other after several decades apart. However, my mind was already blank. The miracle I had waited for all this time was now a reality. Are you Miss Kotobuki Yukari? Yes, I am. And you two must be Ajijo Toya. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for letting us borrow your precious time today. My name is Hachijo Ikuko. I'm mostly in charge of the actual writing. And this is Toya. He mostly handles the drafting. Though the woman who called herself Ikuko was far older than me, she seemed to be unbelievably youthful. It wasn't because she was good with makeup or dressed like a younger woman. It feels strange to say it. There was a strange mystique about her, as though she was immortal and never aging. Then I quickly remembered that she had introduced my brother as Toya. Pardon me for asking, but are you two married? We're not married, but we've been together for a long time. True. Looking back on it, it really has been a long time. My brother smiled as he spoke. When I learned that, at least for him, those long decades hadn't been a period of isolation and loneliness, I felt an incredible sense of peace and relief. Before I knew it, he was staring back into my face. Well, I was just six years old the last time we met. It must be hard for him to find any traces he can recognize. However, I'm sure he'll recognize something just the same. We kept stealing glances at each other and looking away like a couple on a blind date. We were both at an age where outside appearances mattered to us. Even though we both knew, we wouldn't let our polite exterior falter. This humorous exchange was extremely embarrassing. I thought it would be a faded reunion, that we would hold each other and sob tears of gratitude together. However, reality seemed to be different. But that's fine. 
It feels like my heart will explode with happiness. Let's take our orders. Is coffee okay? What does everyone want? I prefer something that isn't so better. How about you, Miss Kotobuki? Oh, I don't mind. I guess I'll have a café au lait. How stiff we're all being. Even my brother seemed to be finding it amusing by now. Well, now. When she said that, my brother and I fell silent and sat up straight. Should I start? Or will we start with you, Toya? I'll go first. I'm the one who pushed so hard for this meeting, after all. As he spoke, he watched me calmly. I came here today thinking you might be a certain person. Her name is Ishremia Angie. When I read your works and I heard your name, I was sure that you were her. That's right. How long it's been since I used that last name. My true name is Ushira Mina Anji. I gave the exaggerated bow that I'd gotten so used to these long years. We've both aged, haven't we, Oni-chan? I whispered this in my heart. Now, it was my turn. With a quick apology, I fished around in my handbag and took out a photo. It was a picture from a trip I'd taken to an amusement park with Battler on Nichan. I had many other pictures of us having a good time, but this one had the best shot of his face. I looked between him and the photo. There was no longer any room for doubt. Mr. Toya, your true name is Ushiramiya Battler, son, isn't it? The hands of the clock inside me stopped. I wanted him to answer with a yes. Even though I was already so sure, I was still about to burst with the tension. And then, when that instant that seemed far too long ended, my brother answered. That's right. Unconsciously, I stared at my brother's face. With an unbelievable quickness, he acknowledged that he was Ushiramiya Battler. My eyes immediately filled and overflowed with tears. I took out a handkerchief and wiped them away, but I couldn't hold them back. Oni-chan was alive after all. So, why didn't he come back to me right away? If he had been there during my darkest days, it would have meant so much to me. Normally the thought would have made me curse my brother, but by now, even that emotion was softened. After all, now that I was faced with the miracle of being reunited with Oni-chan, everything I'd ever felt before fell away with my tears. At this moment, I was happy. I was never alone. I worked so hard for decades with that belief in my heart. And now, I finally been rewarded. By now, I couldn't even stop my tears. For some time, I continued to snob and sniffle. Watching this, my brother hung his head apologetically. Why didn't he come back to me sooner? It looked as though he was feeling regret for that. But I'm sure he had some sort of reason. He's probably here today to tell me about it and apologize. Already, just by him introducing himself to me today, everything inside of me has been washed clean with tears. I'm sorry. I must be 
embarrassing you. No. It's only to be expected. For several decades, you've been waiting all alone, believing that your family would return. I did believe. I believed you would come home. Oni-chan. I held up my hand weakly, and my brother slowly held his out too. Then, I gripped his hand. Regardless of how many long years it passed, it was, without a doubt, my brother's hand. Once more, I had to struggle to hold back the tears. And Ava avoided the explosion accident by escaping to Kuidorian. How did you escape the accident, Nietzsche? <laughs> Nissan. On that day, I escaped through the underground passage. The one that goes to Kuadorian? I was told that an underground passage led to a hidden mansion on the opposite end of the island. However, the place we escaped to was a submarine base, not Kuadorian. I don't know why my brother entered the underground passage on that day. At any rate, he went into the underground passage, and unlike Aunt Ava, he escaped to the submarine base. There, he escaped the explosion, and then survived. After that, I got away on a motorboat. However, I must, it must have capsized somewhere along the way. It... must have? Please forgive him. Toya suffers from memory loss. His memory from around the time he was drowning in the ocean is hazy. Could it be that he forgot he was Ushirmiya Battler for a while? That is correct. Yes. That explains nearly all of the riddles. My brother escaped from the explosion, but either his boat capsized during his escape from the island, or he fell overboard. Afterwards, he must have drifted somewhere, wandered about half conscience, and probably got into a traffic accident. On that day, he was lying on the road. If she had found me leaving a little later, I probably wouldn't have opened my eyes again. I believe you suspected that I was the one who hit you for quite some time. Hey, I've already apologized for that. This explains pretty much everything. Either because of the time he nearly drowned, or because of the traffic accident and my brother's memory was damaged. His memory probably came back eventually. However, by that time, I'd already set foot into my new life as Kotobuki Yukari. Only a handful of people, including President Okonogi, knew where I was. Even if my brother wanted to contact me, there was a very good chance that he wouldn't be able to. Ironically, the name I abandoned when I decided to live in the future. Delayed my reunion with my brother for so long. In that sense, I am responsible. I did it to myself. However, I'm sure I received the message my brother sent me. That message was Itoi Kukuro. I realized that Itoi Kukuro, the forger who claimed to have reached the truth, was actually Hachito Toya. Then I requested a meeting with her through the publishing company to question her about why she was so sure she'd reached the truth. However, I wasn't granted a meeting. In the end, I heard nothing from them, and it's all taken these decades for me to meet Hachicho Toya. If the publishing company had only passed my message on, we could have been reunited so much sooner. However, at the time, I was just a bourgeois girl who liked to throw money around. 
why would they pass on my message when I just barged in with no introduction and ran demanded to meet the famous and popular Hachijo Toya? We probably crossed paths several times. If just one of those had worked out, if we had been able to meet, just how much would my life have changed? But this was fate. God had decided that a few decades were needed before this sibling reunion. And during that time, my brother became one half of a mystery novelist. I became a writer of adventure novels for children. You could say we achieved success in society. My brother and I were reunited after becoming successful. Now I could do nothing but thank God for bringing about this miracle. Maybe it was God's will that we would be reunited after achieving success as novelists. Back then, I was nameless, so I never got through to you. We've met now because we've both become famous as authors. I think all of this was God's will. At the time, we heard through the publishing company that you wanted to have an interview with us. I said that a fan who had discovered Itoi Kukuro's true identity wanted to talk to her. You must have had dozens of fans dying for an interview. You couldn't possibly get to meet all of them. No. They let us know that your name was Ushiromiya Angie. At the time, I had already realized that Toya's true name was Ushiromiya Battler. So I thought that you should be given a chance to meet him. I... refused. My brother said that to me. What did you say? I refused. Because I... I didn't want to meet you. Once more, my brother spoke clearly. I was completely confused. I could only sit there in shock and silence, waiting for the words that were sure to follow. I believed I already mentioned that Toya suffered from memory loss. And then one day... Why did you refuse when you knew it was me? I cut through Ikuko's words and questioned him directly. What reason could my brother have for rejecting me? I couldn't think of any. That unpleasant emotion brought up long forgotten feelings of anger inside me. You must have known that your little sister was living all alone, being crushed by loneliness. So why? Why did you refuse to meet me? My brother hung his head. It seemed more like he was lost for words than apologetic. There was nothing shy about his appearance, and I questioned him again in an even louder voice. When I asked for an appointment with Hajijo Toya, Itoi Kukuro was already famous as a forger. Why did Itoi Kukuro's forgeries reach the truth? It's obvious. My brother Ushimiya Battler explained to her what happened on the island in detail. So the appearance of Itoi Kukuro proves that my brother's memory had returned. Therefore, he can't excuse himself by saying that he didn't remember me. In fact, in reality, he didn't try to make excuses. On the contrary, he'd openly said that he refused to meet me, even though he knew who I was. Hmm. Looking back, I regret what I did. You regret it? Did you ever try thinking about how I felt? 
For decades. For most of my life. Do you realize what feelings I had to live with? Various emotions swirled inside of me. I realized that I wasn't in control of it anymore. I can only moan to prevent myself from saying something I regret. I feel deeply ashamed for doing something so cruel to you. That's why I've searched for you ever since then. For your sake and for mine, I should have met you much earlier. Then why wouldn't you meet me then? Miss Kotobuki. As I said before, his memory was damaged. No, perhaps I should say that his brain was damaged. It's an after effect of the accident. But his memory came back just the same, didn't it? Yes, his memory came back. However, that did not remove the after effects of the damage. I have Ishremia Battler's memories. However, because of the damage to my brain, I can't think of those as my own. You can't think of those as your own? Yes. It's true that my memories of my escape from the island is still hazy. However, I remembered almost everything else. Like how those pink hair ornaments of yours that you treasured so much. Or something I won for you at the game corner in that amusement park. Yes, that's right. They're a treasure from when I was a child. I still keep them with me in my handbag. I remember a lot more beside that. I remember you giving mom trouble because you hated eating seaweed. I remember that you tried to move it to my plate and trick her. And when? If you remember that much, then why can't you think of those memories as your own? That's the result of, my, of the brain damage to my brain. I've been to several hospitals, but didn't do any good. You probably can't understand it. You can't know how painful it is to have your mind suddenly filled with the memories of a man you don't know. He was terrified he wasn't himself anymore. His mind was filled with the memories of a man he didn't recognize, and they threatened to crush and overwhelm him. They must have been his own lost memories. However, his brain couldn't accept those as his. Those days were painful. Terrifying. It felt like my mind was being invaded. Tonight, when I turn off the lights and go to sleep, maybe I will never wake up again. Maybe a different man will wake up tomorrow morning and start living life in my body. I can't count the nights this terror has tormented me. Several times he tried to convince himself that they were his real memories. He told himself that he was Ushemia Battler over and over again. But... But nothing worked. I am me, Hachijo Toya. No matter how much Ushemia Battler's memories flow into my mind, to me, they're the memories of another person. I couldn't accept Ushemia Battler. As Ushiramiya Battler said this, he hung his head and his eyes turned red. And then, one day, when he was caught between himself and the other self he couldn't accept, he had a fit. <sighs> Fortunately, his life was spared, but the after effects forced him to spend his life in a wheelchair. You mean... he... Now I know why he showed up in that wheelchair. 
And now, I know why he refused to meet with me. He was afraid that I would call him Big Brother. He was terrified of meeting me, fearful that the part of himself that wasn't him would grow still further in his mind. Even so, he fought. He felt that since his Shermia Battler was inside him, it was his responsibility to meet you. Thinking that, he kept on fighting in the space between his two selves. And then, he had a fit. After something like that, it was only natural that Yuvako would tell him that he didn't need to remember being a Shermia Battler anymore. Bit by bit, he tried to forget that he was once Ushirumiya Battler. Doctor's instructions and medication. With that and Ikako's diligent care, he slowly began to regain his peace of mind. Even so, I... I thought I would have to meet you sooner or later. To be honest, I didn't get a wink of sleep last night. I was scared of meeting you. If I meet you, would I die? Yes, I was afraid. However, here I am, talking to you normally. That's why I regret what I did. If only I could have met with you earlier. You and the Ashremia Battler inside of me might not have had to suffer for all those years. Just thinking that makes me feel so sorry. As the one who was once Ashremia Battler said this, he broke down crying. I already understood. So, it really was true. Ushirumiya Battler did die that day. After all, didn't the witches say that he was dead so often with the red truth? How pathetic for the witch of resurrection, the witch of the future, who swore that everyone would be together always. <laughs> Toya son, please raise your head. Uh, Miss Kotobuki. They realized why I had called him Toya son. By calling him by that name, I myself felt the agitation in my heart subside a little. Thank you. You must have suffered so much. Thank you, Mr. Toya. Uh, uh. <sighs> Thank you, Nisa. Thanks for pushing yourself so hard to come here today. Holding hands, we brought our foreheads close and we cried together for a while. Then, we talked of the old days. He remembered many things vividly, even things that I couldn't remember myself. <laughs> Each time he made me cry even harder and he hung his head apologetically. I realized how much this hurt him, so I kept nodding in encouragement with a strange look on my face, something between a sob and a smile. Even if he isn't Ushiramiya Battler, my own Nichan came back to me. Welcome home, Onichan.
Still you. It had already gotten dark outside. Even though we come from far away, he was willing to stay as late as this. We left the store. It's probably best if I don't meet with Mr. Toya again. It will cause him pain. And of course, I'll find myself bound to the past again. Even so, just one more time. There was one place I felt I had to show him. Mr. Toya, would you mind meeting with me just one last time? There's a place I feel I need to show you. Sure. I don't mind. From my handbag, I pulled an invitation written on a folded up piece of A4 paper. The pair of them spread it out. My, my. Now this looks like a splendid event. Come to think of it, you've been involved in lots of things besides novels, haven't you? Would you lend me your time just once more, on that day? That way, I think both me and my brother will be satisfied. I think it might also be a chance for you to free yourself from the weight of my brother's memory, Mr. Toya. I don't believe we have any plans for them. As long as we can finish the afterword for the book. Okay, Miss Gotobuki. I'd be happy to join you. Thank you, Mr. Toya. Cold October night was a reminder that winter was approaching. Oh, okay, back to me. The two people who called themselves Hachito Toya visited the city once again by Angie's invitation. A car stopped in front of a large building. Kuko unfolded the wheelchair with a practiced hand, went the shoulder to Toya as he got out of the passenger seat, and helped him into his chair. It looks splendid. The Fukuin house. <laughs> it's my first time coming here, but I know it well. I believe it's the institution for children that was funded by the Ashuramiya family. Madam Ikuko, Mr. Toya, allow us to welcome you to the Fukuin house. They're welcomed by Angie and some staff members. This was the Fukuin house. A welfare institution for unfortunate children who had lost their parents. In the past, this institution had been established thanks to the Ushermiya Kinzo support. However, that support has been interrupted, and the Fukuin house has been forced to shut down for a time. Decades passed. And now the institution would be revived. Revived by the hand of Kotobuki Yukari. It's a pleasure to see you again, Miss Kotobuki. Thank you for inviting us. The two of us want you to have this. It's not much, but I hope the children enjoy it. That's not the reason I invited you here. My apologies. Don't worry about that. The tales of the future are always woven by children. After all, without them, the tales of humans will not continue. Children are treasures. So please, let this be useful. Thank you very much. We have a form for, for donations, so if it isn't too much trouble... The Fukuin House have been drastically remodeled in recent years, in hopes that children would one day be able to remember this as a fun place. Angie used her own money to massively remodel it into a beautiful establishment. But now she had accumulated a lot of wealth as a novelist. But even without that, she had been saving the tens of millions of yen she had got from the Ashuramiya groups each year under the name of living expenses. This melanous money had been used generously to help the children. It 
and they came into the entrance hall. A cheerful scene was spread before them. There were pictures of crafts created by the children. Every corner was filled with things on display. The contrast between this elegant building and the school atmosphere was amusing. The yells and laughter of kids running around drifted in from the distance. I'm going to actually take like one second because I realized that um, I did not actually set any of the other characters audios to on. So I'm just going to do that right now. So the next scene is much easier to edit out because this is going to be a really long chunk of time. And I'm just kind of talking to fill time right now. I'm incredibly sorry. This is not indicative of the next scene, by the way. I'm just doing this preemptively. Airpoint, oh. I'm Turn already on. crying. Ooh, fuck. <laughs> I imagine that many of the children come here hanging their heads in sorrow. Think that they could laugh like that. <laughs> you really have done something great. Anyone can use magic to create a future and find their fragment of happiness. This is a witch's school for teaching that magic. <laughs> the witch's dormitory from Sakutara's Great Adventure. Oh. How embarrassing. So you've read it too. We've read straight through we read straight through it right after our last meeting. I really must bow my head, not only to your talent as a writer, but to your warm heart. How embarrassing. <laughs> this way. Straight to the end. Pushing Toya's wheelchair, we advance. Oh, back to you. Pushing Toya's. <laughs> Pushing Toya's wheelchair, we advance through the corridor and reach the great door at the end. The happy voices of children came from the other side. Apparently, Apparently this is where tonight's just... party was being held. There was a Vajanko Lanners called of Origami. Tonight was the Fukuin's house Halloween party. Here you are, Mr. Toya. I see. So it's trick or treat. He was handed a bag filled with candy. A teacher warns him in a small voice to watch out for rampaging children. Children. Haven't had anything to do with them for years. Please tell the children stories of dreams. All of us welcome guests here. That's tricky. What should I tell them? When you're handing in your manuscripts, choose your published compl company wisely. Don't pay attention to reader polls. <laughs> then I'll open the doors. The children are waiting. Angie opened the large double doors. This... This is... At the side of the hall, Toy opened his mouth in wide-eyed shock. This was the Great Hall of the Ashurmia Mansion. No, that's impossible. This is definitely the Fukuin House. But its hall was just like the one in the Rokenjima Mansion. What a splendid hall. This is... A replica of the hall in the Ishirmiya Mansion on Rokinjima. Yes. I've reproduced it as well as my memory could let me. The details might be wrong, though. <laughs> no. This really is the hall of the Ishirmiya Mansion on that day. And then Toya's eyes fixed on something on the other end of the side of the, uh, the other end, the other end of the room. It was a portrait, a portrait of Rokenjima's other master. It's it's exactly the same as my memories. 
The artist hired by Ishimi Kinzo to paint the portrait had a photo. I had him draw it again based on that. Hmm. I was simply frozen in shock. The long, long, large table was filled with Halloween party food and surrounded with children stuffing themselves. The teacher said, Everyone, we have guests. Children looked at us all at once, then stood up and ran forward. Oh. Wait. Alright, we're just gonna turn it on now. Just it's the same party from that day! Just, just wait one second before you start crying, please. The smiles and eyes of the children welcomed me. Yeah. I know. I know all of your faces. Vieta stepped forward and held out a hand to Battler as he sat in the wheelchair by the grass. An explosive applause greeted Batlock. Everyone was there. Everyone. 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 And Beto hugged Batlock, and then never let him go.
I dedicate this tale to my beloved witch, Beatrice. This is the uh, credits for the uh, PS3 to PC porting of this game. So I think that, look, but before we say anything else, I just want to say really quickly, thank you all very much for watching through this and listening to us uh, do our weird voice acting for the better part of a year. This is ultimately one of the biggest, like personal and I guess also friend-wide productions I think I've had the courtesy of undertaking as well as many other people. Umineko means a lot to me and that's why I wanted to do this in the first place. And I just want to thank all of you so very, very much for watching and possibly supporting us into the future, either through Twitch or YouTube or anything else. I think you're going to look forward to what we have next. And I also just want to extend one final thank you to our many, many voice actors. It's been a long and arduous process, but I'm glad that we managed to get to this point. You all deserve a round of applause. Come on. Come on. Talk now. Go, 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 go. Come on. <laughs> oh, you get me free? All right. Here. That's, that's why I'm getting a little I'm clapping my shoulder because I have to hold down the push to talk button. Oh my god. Shout out to our beautiful followers, Ramen, Morinda, B. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much to the friends made along the way. <laughs> Maybe the real Umineko was the friends we made along the way. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to us for allowing you to oh, we got tips. Her, her, her dreams. Oh. Characters, I'm, maybe? I think it's just... Yeah, characters. <laughs> Momotaro. Peach Boy <laughs> is a Japanese fairy tale named after its main character, oh, Momotaro. Momotaro. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Peach um, boy. Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Your new name is now Peach Boy. I, pref I prefer John Kenton. <laughs> and then, yeah, here's the characters. <laughs> are we, uh, so, is there a thing after this? Is there a tea party? Or? That's it. That's that it. it. We were done. What? I thought we were doing a fade out. I thought we were doing no, a fade out. No, we're, we're canceling that. No, no, no. I opted no, no, no. to. I, I kind of want it in voice that I think it's better because I think Tyrion yeah Jin I think I think we should have your yeah. yeah 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 he's he's right we should have like people's genuine reactions to this Anje Anje yeah. reaction Anje uh, Beatrice we try to save your like, like yeah. theories or things you want to talk about for the next because, stream but like yeah you're just how it was your thoughts on like this uh shout that out to raw, the that, that, sorry i want to finish that clearing up that raw emotion you get in your chest when you finish this uh story mm -hmm. is I cannot still, be yeah. duplicated and it is very I, I unfortunately mm -hmm. may have had some stuff that may have damaged that experience but it was still it's very beautiful of an ending uh shout out to beelzebub the best character the best <laughs> the best sister she may not have talked a lot but she goddamn liked food Oh yeah, this is the, okay. It's just the same bullshit. There's a there's a secret oh, thing you can click top. that. Yeah. There's nothing actually was, here. Wasn't that point. wasn't that city you used in Higurashi, the one with the stairs? No. Or am I miss? Okay, no, then wasn't. I'm thinking of a different CG. I'm thinking of the one at the shrine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I also guess you should apologize for how uh, janky this is, but keep in mind it's fucking difficult to <laughs> to keep this in mm. mind with Japanese voiceovers as the default, technically. If anybody expects this to not be jank, I want to slap them. You did your best. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, now it's time for Golden Fantasia. 
That's that's not the correct opening. We have to we have to wait. Has to rotate around really quickly. Can we launch the game real quick and just like play? What? Does so does this mean that we get to enter the golden land now or no? We have we're going to be doing an extra stream where we just talk about everything. Go seeing the cat box. The Rokenjima Fight Club thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, uh, you guys better delete any particularly mean things because we know you are the nastiest people. <laughs> hey. Mean things you may have said about us. Okay. Oh, oh, the oh, 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 here we go. Wait, who said that? Nice CG? Oh, this Rosa. <laughs> so this is the CG. This is the one we haven't been able to show you for quite literally the longest fucking time. Ooh. Twerking right Very now. twerkable. Very twerkable. It really, it, it really is a banger. Oh, come on, Bon. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't say anything nasty about us, not to our faces. Maybe behind our back. People no. are nice. Hey, guys, make, sure you, make sure you guys get rid of the successful MK Ultra experiment notes and fight. I mean, what? There she is! No. <laughs> Uh, so this shows up episode been, one, by the way. Wait, wait, <laughs> wait! What? What episode did this show up? No, on? this shows up like this. This starts playing episode five onward. Oh Jesus! Oh, this yeah. is way right. Yeah. yeah. Japan has their own unique take on their interpretation of spoiler. Spoil it after day one. Yeah, anime titles in Japan are just a brief Tsuru synopsis Aganashini. of the episode. Oh, this is so good. Okay, I think I'm calmed down enough. That's good. It's all right, Khan. I mm -hmm. was tearing up, and I. Oh, uh, I'm glad Khan's having this reaction. Tell you for like a second. I wish I could have this. <laughs> Episode five. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad. You, I'm glad Small Angie didn't get spoiled for me. I love Small Angie Holy so much. Holy shit! So cute. We we were debating playing this before the yeah. last bit. I'm so glad you, we I stopped it from you. fucking happening. Also, please look, please look in the reference room really quickly for some uh, splendid shots from the manga section. It's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> I got told that that old battler looks older. Okay, yeah, he looks a bit older. There's a bit more gaunt, a bit more wrinkled. You could call it yeah. a license. Because, like, whenever oh, I'm looking hey. at, like, uh, <sighs> battler and this, like, my thought is that is just battler with hair dye. Mm -hmm. I mean, like... You gotta remember, Ava's like 50 Actually, and she looks how she is. Yeah, she did, didn't she? I yeah. didn't take that into consideration. Yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. they, they did go with the CGs, but they, they decided to get a tiny bit lazy for what they could have done with the sprites. Or they didn't get the budget. Okay, like, um, so... Are, um, we still on, are we still recording? Are we done? We're, we're still recording. Um, I assume okay. that people wanted to hear uh, people's... <laughs> Uh, live, honest opinions for what we've gone through thus far. Uh, so, I... make it make it short because we're gonna do a big. We're, we're, we're going to do the big stick swinging helicopter and uh, talk later on a different Don't thing. Don't refer to it like that. Oh, I love referring to it like that. Shout out to this tequila I may have been sipping on during this. You were drunk all this time. <laughs> Look, I <laughs> wanted to get the maximum emotion. You were always I wasn't First no all of that. No, 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 he's saying he has a tequila right now. Yeah, I had a celebratory tequila. I, need a piece of that. I remember you were drunk like half the time. I was not drunk the half best. the time. Dude, the food, where is your memory pudding. now? Crimson, what the hell? Yeah, I was sober most of these. I there I were the. A, I was making a slight jokey joke. I I thought you were. Uh, it sounds well like, like a, a joke. It sounded more accusatory. Please bring it back to your thoughts on Umanek. I thought we were saving though. Oh, okay. Raw emotion, half of it. All right, I thought Small Angie was the best character. I love Small Angie. She deserves head pants. She's so cute. 
But I... how do you feel about Umaneko? Yeah, I thought we were saving that. Okay. Not anymore. Knee wait, jerks. I thought, wait. What's oh, your knee jerk reaction to the ending? My knee jerk is if you are going to write a story, this is good reference material. This <laughs> is a good blueprint. It's beautiful. It's yeah, a really good is... story. You're not wanting more, you're not wanting less. It's beautiful. Like, I wanna... I, I'll get my, my true thoughts out, like my, uh, cause mm -hmm. I'm, I will make a character, uh, re, uh, comparison there, graphic, just cause I had a lot of emotion regarding that, but there's also a lot of personal stuff in regards to Higurashi that it hit me. But, and this didn't hit me as much as, a uh, personal emotion-based thing, as much as it did, I found the intellectual side, the, the story writing blueprint side of this, very intriguing. I thought the emotion stuff was good. And I thought the climaxes were good, but I thought the in-betweens uh, j just didn't hit me as much as the real climaxes of Higurashi. But I'll get more into that in the in the uh, thoughts, big dick swinging, big dick swinging thoughts ep episode. We'll do probably next week, I assume. Uh, I... We're thinking either next week or we might uh, just sacrifice a day in the middle of the week to do that kind of stuff. If people are available for it. Well, I mean, like, what about? Friday. Well, I mean, like, uh, doing it, like, Wednesday instead or something. Ah. I, I just wanted to say thank you. <laughs> I'm very glad you are having this reaction, Con. I thank I you, Con. Thank you for everything. God, yeah, Con, you started this. You started this. I mean, Stuff I think that, Orange it was, it was made the suggestions. I think Orange made the suggestion. Whenever you suggested uh, doing... A visual novel reading in that other Discord we were in, I think that Orange was the one that mentioned do either Higurashi or Umineko. And you went with Higurashi, I believe. But still, you were the one, you were the catalyst. <laughs> yeah, we can all thank you for how much fun we've had for the last couple of years. Yeah, congratulations to the con. I, I, can, I have to, I can't clap, but I can, I can slap my arm here. Yeah, slapping the arm. Yeah, this is, this is the best clap I can get. <laughs> Thank you. You deserve it. A, a shout out to our mascot Riri, the lovable dog that you may have occasionally heard guest starring. Yes, the devil doggo that likes to spawn at any time. We we love Riri so much. He's adorable, especially when he randomly barks at certain scenes. Yes, um, uh, emotional climaxes are nothing Wait. without Constock. So I'm looking in the reference room right now, and I'm seeing the words, she's just embarrassed because of the boob pudding. What the hell? Uh, uh, Angie, Angie brought boob pudding to Battler's grave. Wait, what? which reference is this? Hey, it didn't show up. It didn't show up in the... In it is the, a manga exclusive yeah. scene as far as I understand. It's literally right there. I'm trying to yeah, find he, he's, it. He's oh. holding it. And the... I bring pudding to the grave. Is it the most recent image? Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I... It, it's a bit hard to see because I am my. Well, I, I didn't I want to post. On... <laughs> I didn't want to post it actually because I had to kind of I find a scene of a person uh, just bringing dessert to a graveyard. Kind of an interesting thought. Don't they do that in some cultures? He just really wanted yeah. his cousin's boobs. He just wanted boob pudding because he thought it'd be funny, I guess. You know, bring boob pudding to my funeral. You know what? No, make it a giant penis, please. Okay, I feel like we're running a little bit off topic. I think we'll just yeah, wait this, for this that. Yeah, this got way off topic. We're just going to go ahead and wait for the big stream at the end now. Um, what are we doing? What are we doing at the end? Talk about that. We're going. No, I mean next. I mean next. After, after the big dick swinging thing. I think it was uh, the oh, of well, that. um, well, yeah, for, one, one. for one, we're going to read Umaneko Saku in addition to this, which is, well, not this... the full thing. We're going to be reading The Last Notes, which is just like a short additional episode that just kind of has like some extra nonsense in it. It also has the vocal version of uh, 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 At the End of the World that B was so desperately looking for. <laughs> She's so desperate for this. She was just constantly waiting it's for it. It's such a good song. It's so good. I, 
Like, yeah, last note's cool, but it's no Arigato for 556. Five, okay, so, <laughs> so true, Zaz. It's not so Jessica true. and the Electric Fan we True, know. that one's pretty good. <laughs> pretty fucking Basically, sick. Basically, after Umineko, they made, like, two to three smaller mm -hmm. games of just fun little stories, most of which are just it's goofy. It's not which is Tantaba, which is actually pretty sad. Yeah, Tantabata is the is Tantabata, yeah. soul crushing. Um, but yeah, we will ask that you guys refrain from wiki diving for a little bit so we can go ahead and unveil the cat box and all that fun business on stream. It's not over yet. Mm -hmm. Will yeah, we, we will. get answers? Yes, you will get all of the answers, every single <laughs> one of them. Yes. Every I question you have on. will be answered to the best of our ability. Because I want to tell well, Schrodinger to suck my cock. That's Ew. not a question. Mm -hmm. Um, I think. Sorry, I'm I think. Part. What is it? Do 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 the? I think you know what? I think for the next stream, I think it would be fair enough because I feel like uh, maybe the veterans would like to give some thoughts at the end of that. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah, one more that's scary, though. Mm. What? Wait, what? Mm. <laughs> Us giving our thoughts is scary. Well, not me, but the rest. What, mm. what do you mean? Like, you know what I mean, B. <laughs> our thoughts on, like, Ooh, an echo? Or, no, I got I'm like, Ooh, an echo. I don't mean echo. <laughs> oh. On, on certain oh. characters. Yeah. Sorry. Listen, as the... I mean, as the as story as I'm in this bitch, like... <laughs> All right. <laughs> As the story, oh, as yeah, 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 yeah. No, just... Our emotions and such. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. I think we're gonna go it's ahead and now here. Yep. Thank you so. Uh, yeah. Thank you for all the people. <laughs> and we will see. Even Echo's not over yet. Not quite, but it's essentially not over. Quite. It is essentially the main story is over. <laughs> look forward to the next shenanigans we have planned. If this, if you stop watching here, look forward to the next shenanigans. <laughs> Adam Morganza. Mm -hmm. we'll see you all in a bit. Bye-bye. See you again. Bye. Have, a, have a nice Bye. day.